The five element fists are the foundational techniques of Xing Yi Quan, and they give rise to all other techniques. Hence, they are referred to classically as the mother fists. The key function of practicing the five element fists is to develop specific vectors of force. Each individual element focuses on specific vectors of force, which are manifested through body mechanics. It is these vectors of force which are applied to and give rise to all other techniques, literally the elements included in all actions. Heng Quan, or crosscut fist, is the fifth of the five elements. The classics state, the element that crosscut relates to is earth. Its form is like a pellet shot, and it is elastic, and the internal organ that it relates to is the spleen. The reference to the pellet shot refers to its vector of force, which has a round characteristic hidden within, and it also features the properties of elasticity, making it flowing and full, with balanced inherent stored power. The outer structure and the intrinsic force of Hung Quan is full and balanced. The upper body and the lower body are full, without disconnection and without gaps in power, and this is what is meant by being round. The classics state that when doing Heng Quan, one cannot see the horizontal motion. This crossing refers to the vector of force traversing across your own body. Coupled with its zigzag horizontal stepping, Heng Quan is akin to a wedge splitting a rock. While the wedge enters directly, its sides apply force to the target, cutting it and forcing it apart. Heng Quan features attack with defensive action concealed within. It features a twisting roll of the forearm as it strikes out, coupled with oblique footwork. It is subtle and profound. While there are numerous variations of Hung Quan, in this primer video I shall cover the fundamental details and standard execution within my Hebei line of Xing Yi Quan. In general, all methods and variations of Hung Quan adhere to and implement the principles that I shall present here. Stand with the feet at shoulder width apart and extend the hands out ahead as you would in the Sun T-shirt position. Clench both hands into fists and turn the lead hand over so the fist heart faces up. Move the lower fist up the center line and out under the elbow and forearm of the lead arm with the fist heart facing down. When the two wrists meet, turn over both fists as you continue to extend the lower hand out while you draw the lead hand back into the lower abdomen. The extended arm ends at shoulder height directly out ahead with the fist heart facing up and the arm slightly bent while the lower arm is drawn in tightly to the lower abdomen with the fist heart facing down and the elbow tucked into the ribs. The shoulders are settled and the elbows are sunk. Press the crown of the head up. The strike goes out directly ahead on your center line. Urge the punching arm shoulder forward and pull the lower arm shoulder back and twist the waist while you keep the buttocks settled as you strike. Ensure that the two arms have a twisting, rolling and drilling power, which is integrated evenly without any slackness or gaps. This manifests in both arms at the same time. It is as if the two arms are twisting a rope, with the arm being drawn back twisting inwards, pulling back and tucking down, while the arm being extended twists outwards while extending and drilling ahead. This is in line with the classical concept of qi zuan, or rising and drilling. When the two wrists meet, you should have the intent that your fists are gripping thick cotton wool and that you are tearing it apart as your one hand extends out while you draw the other one in with both twisting and coiling in opposite directions throughout this action. This mental intent will help you to generate the correct integrated force and mechanics with both arms working together as you practice. Once again, this is what is meant by Hung Quan being round and full. Practice this slowly at first to ensure that you conform to the requirements. Once you have some proficiency with the movement, you may add speed and power and continue to practice on the spot. Ensure that the fist extends out on your body's center line, which is achieved by twisting the waist and extending and withdrawing the shoulders. Pay careful attention to the path the elbows travel on as well, both when extending and when withdrawing. The lead shoulder should draw the elbow back, which tracks on the center line and protects the heart, which is then drawn in to protect the ribs and the flank. 
when the arm is being extended, the elbow should tuck in and protect the solar plexus. Throughout the entire motion and strike, maintain a concave chest, classically known as Han Xiong, as well as settled shoulders and sunk elbows, which are classically known as Song Jian Zhui Zhou. As Hong Quan features footwork that has not been covered previously, once you are proficient in the upper body actions, you should then practice Hong Quan's footwork independently before combining the upper and lower body actions. Initially place your hands and stand as explained in a previously released footwork primer. From here, draw in the lead foot and touch the toes down in front of the rear foot. Next, with the left leg, take a large step out ahead, about 45 degrees to the left, and after it has landed, follow in quickly with the right foot, half a step, ending with the majority of your weight on the rear foot. Next, the front foot steps out ahead once again as you land firmly on it and quickly follow in with the rear foot to beside the ankle of the lead foot. Once again, step out now with the right foot, about 45 degrees to the right, and quickly follow in with the left foot, half a step, ending with the majority of your weight on the rear foot. Continue repeating the above, alternating between left and right. When initially drawing in the lead foot, shift the majority of your weight onto the rear leg and form a high empty stance, or Gao Xu Bu. When stepping out 45 degrees, the toes of the stepping foot should be hooked in as it lands. The rear foot follows in and the toes are also facing directly ahead when landing. Following each oblique step, ensure that the next initial step goes out forward and ensure that the toes are hooked slightly inwards as the foot lands. The upper body should coil and twist forcefully and the shoulder turns inwards tightly as you step with the opposite leg. The legs should have a closing or scissoring force between them when you land, and the knees must tuck in slightly, with the rear leg thigh and knee stabbing downwards into the center of your stance. Even though you are stepping obliquely, your focus should be directly ahead of you and not off to the side. Continue to practice the footwork independently until you execute it while maintaining its requirements. Then you will be ready to combine the upper and lower body movements. The standard method of executing Hung Quan features the issuing of force timed with the front foot in an Ao Bu or opposite step, which has the opposite hand and foot forward. The handwork and zigzag stepping details already explained in this primer video are to be combined. Clench both fists and draw in the left arm into your lower abdomen as you withdraw the lead foot. Drill the left fist up your center line and out to nose height with the fist heart facing up and the forearms ulnar side twisted in while you are in the high empty stance. Next, lift the right fist up your center line with the fist heart facing down and the elbow tucked into the ribs. As you step out with your left leg, your right fist travels out under the left elbow and along the left forearm and punch it out as you twist the forearm inward, ending at shoulder height with the fist heart facing up. As you punch out, the other arm is drawn in to the lower abdomen and rotates as it comes in to end with the fist heart facing down. Following each strike, advance half a step forward with the front leg without moving the extended arm. When the rear foot steps out ahead at 45 degrees, the rear fist once again travels up and out under the extended arm's forearm, twisting and punching out, finishing as the front foot lands. The punching arm is slightly bent at the end of each strike. The three actions happen together, that of punching the one fist out, drawing the other fist back and stepping. The timing and force should be equal between the two arms. Do not withdraw the extended arm until the two wrists meet, at which point the fists begin to twist while one is drawn in as the other one strikes out. Ensure you utilize the waist and shoulders to drive the actions while keeping the correct posture and focus on coordinating the entire body. Time each strike with the front foot. 
pay attention to the direction of the steps and the hooking in of the toes. Ensure that the knees are drawn inwards and that the crotch does not open. The majority of the body weight is on the rear leg following each strike. Keep the shoulders and elbows settled. As with each of the five element fists, Hung Chuen requires daily repetition and long-term focused practice in order for the correct body mechanics, actions and force vector to manifest. Hung Chuen contains implied attack and defensive aspects which manifest in the actions of both arms and the body. For example, the withdrawing arm can divert an opponent's attack off the center line while the extending arm attacks at the same time. However, the extending arm can also be utilized for defensive purposes as it diverts an attack with the sides of the forearm while simultaneously attacking. This makes Hung Chuen multifaceted with numerous aspects of attack and defense combined together. The hands work together along with the footwork which adds an oblique forward charging power. It is imperative to utilize the entire body to generate force, correctly employing the waist and shoulders, allowing you to attack the opponent as soon as you are in contact with him with a unified whole body force. Hung Chuen uses an oblique angle to break a direct attack, using attack to defend and defense to attack. It moves at an angle to attack directly, using a circle to create a straight line. While deeper details regarding Hung Chuen's practice, its variations and applications should be attained through direct transmission by learning from an authentic teacher, I have presented here the fundamental version of Hung Chuen, most prominent in Hebei lines of Xing Yi Chuen. The details covered in this primer video will enable you to begin or correct your practice.